Amen. We're going to concern ourselves with uh, uh, the epistle of Romans, the 11th chapter, verses 1 and 2, and then we're going to slide down to 29 through 32. But I learned in school that if you want to know what's really going on, you got to go back and see some things that happened before to where we got to this point that we're in today. So I moved up in Romans up into the 10th chapter. And, and, and I was looking at some things that were written, you know, because uh, they were talking about Christ being, being raised from the dead again. And, and they said, but, but, but what's said? The word is near thee, even in the mouth and thy heart, that the word of faith, which we preach. Because God told us that what? If we confess with the mouth and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. We learned a little about that on last week. But with the heart, man believe it into righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, whosoever believe it on him shall not be ashamed. You see, you know, this is what God said. Now, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'm going to be ashamed of you before my father. And so you, you know, we need to watch how we walk and how we talk. And then he goes on, because see, sometimes, you know, we got a problem with, well, with the number of Methodists, Baptists, Holy this and all of that, Greek, the whole. But my Bible says, for the scripture said, I mean, it says that, uh, for the scripture said, whosoever shall believe on me, but there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all. See, we don't understand that when God comes, just because we're in church, yeah, you know, we think that we are so much better than everybody else, but we just sinners saved by the grace of God. You know, on yesterday, I attended a funeral with Sister uh, Redick, Redrick. They had to get me on that. I was pronouncing that name wrong. They called me out on that. Uh, but Sister Redrick, and those are beautiful flowers that they had there. And I listened to her story and the things that she had done and, and the people she had touched, the lives she had touched and all that, even in all of the greatness that she did for the work for the Lord, let me tell you something. You can't earn your way into heaven. Uh, you can't earn your way into heaven. I don't care how good we are, we still butt filthy rags. And so it was kind of telling us about who we are. If you call on the Lord, he said, uh, 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 and how, how shall you learn about the Lord? How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel. But then it says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. See, we've not all, we're, we're, we're in church, and we've not obeyed the gospel. So we know there are others around here they don't even come anywhere close to obeying the gospel. But let me tell you something. The same God that blesses and saves you can save them. So, so then he says, faith coming by, by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But I say, hear, hear, have not they heard? See, you know, that's where it is sometimes. You know, <laughs> we always got people trying to throw other people under the bus. And see, what we have here, he said, but, but have they not heard the same God that I heard? They've been out there preaching, they've been teaching all these. Yeah, they heard. Have they not heard? Yes, barely. They, their sound went into all the earth, and their word into the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? See, that was God's chosen people. So you would expect them to just fall in line to do it, but as you're raised in a family and you know the rules of the house, but you don't abide by all the rules of the house, come on, amen. So that's the same way it is with us, with children. 
who were children of God, and some of us were a little hard-headed, and we did things in our own way. He said, but he heard the word, but I say, did not Israel know first Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by the foolish nation. I will anger you, but Esaias or Isaiah, it was very bold and said, I was found of them that sought me not. In other words, he, he was saying, look, I was outside of the faith. I, I wasn't even doing what I was supposed to do. What, what, what even closer? I was found by those who, who, who wasn't even looking for me. But, but, but they found me anyhow. He said, I was found that he said, I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. Wasn't looking for them. Wasn't asking about him because they weren't worried about him. He was a whole different person. But to Israel, he said, all day long I have stretched forth my hands. See, this is, this is, this is some of us now. Well, I done did all of this for you. I did all that for you, and you still disobedient. He said, "Our hands unto a disobedient and, and and a contrary people." That's what he called them. It was just, you know, here I am. I don't brought you out of bondage, took you all through a road, prepared a, a, a way for you to get out into the promised land, and yet you still. So, so, but it's easy for us to throw them under the bus. What about us? What about us? We don't walk perfectly. <laughs> we don't live a perfect life. We don't do the right thing all the time. You know, sometimes God got to spank our hand. What do you think is going on with all these hurricanes and all this stuff? God just spanking us. He said, y'all better listen to me. I'm not asleep. I see what's going on. He said, but sometimes God says, get up get us position to where all we can do is call on the Lord. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know what it was like, but to me to be out there and I have to do, go dive in the ocean to keep from being somebody called on God then. Somebody called on the God then. He said, but to Israel he said, all day long I stress, but you still disobedient and contrary. And then we get back into today's text. He says, then, so I say then, had God cast away his people? God doesn't throw us away. You know, he, he, he always, that's, that's the thing about the God that we share. He gives us chance after chance after chance. They say the God of a second chance, but it's not always God of chances. Because the Lord knows if it was second chance, then I'm doomed. But... <laughs> But uh, we had to go over. And chance says he gives us to come back. He said he had cast away his people. God forbid. But I, and then, and that's what I like. You know, Paul always likes to give you his resume. Paul says, uh, look, let me tell y'all something. I am also an Israelite of the seed of Abraham. He leaves all he's giving you his resume. Of the tribe of Benjamin. So, hey, and y'all know what Paul did. Paul persecuted the church. But yet God did not throw him away. God touched his heart and brought him back into the fold. Sometimes we had to go and get out of our home and find out that that green grass that we thought was so green was nothing but brown grass with a light on it. You know, so uh, we had to come back into the real world and find out. So that's what he had to do. He said, but God had not cast away his people for he foreknew what the scripture said of Isaiah because Isaiah was, was, was getting ready to throw you under the bus. He said how he make an intercession to God against Israel. Isaiah was talking to God. He said hey man you need to just give up on them people. They ain't no good. They're not going to do right. They're not going to act right. You know so he goes over that's the uh, in Isaiah 65, uh, let's take a look at that right quick. He said, I am salt of thee, and I ask not for me. I am forbid of them that salt me not. I said, behold, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. He said, I have spread out my hands 
all the day unto a rebellious people which walk it in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. And see, it's easy to throw somebody under the bus uh, because you just a little better off. Y'all hear me say all the time, Christians are the most judgmental people around. We forget where we come from. <laughs> and we forget that we're not all raised there anyway. You know, <laughs> so we have to watch it. But we are so often ready to look down on some people. I remember Dale at one of the churches, a pastor, a young man, uh, I had been corresponding with him while he was in prison. When he got out of prison, he came to the church. He was working with me in the church. Very spiritual man. And so I said, you know what? Man, I need you to work with my youth. And he was doing an excellent job with the youth. But then <laughs> the Christians, <laughs> the Christians said, how dare you bring him? He 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 been in prison for drugs. Let me see. Most of Paul's writings was done in where? Hello, somebody. I uh, so well, we're gonna throw out Romans. We're not gonna follow him because Paul was in prison. But 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 see, that's the way it is. Sometimes you go through things, God allows you to go through things so that you can be a better. A, 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 a preacher to somebody to keep them from going through the same thing. You know what? I told that young man, I said, you know what? I said, Brother Scott, I, said, I love you. I said, I'm not even going to bring you in through the Methodist church. The young man left. He's pastoring a big church in Colorado right now. Uh, you know, when God has his hand on you and he has favor on you, ain't nothing nobody can do that can take it away from you. So see, Isaiah will say, but, 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 but Lord, but Lord, they, 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 they kill prophets. You know, they, they dig down the altars and, and, and I'm left alone and, and they seek my life. Yeah, that's the Christians. You know, we forget that the same God that forgave you. Because like I said on that funeral yesterday, you know, with uh, that, uh, all that my sister, all that was done, all the great work that she had done, you still not earn your way in heaven. It is a gift, a gift from God, and that he thought so highly of you that he allowed you to come out. Now let's slip down to the 29th verse in that uh, uh, 11, in, in that in that 11th chapter. He say, "For the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. You can't you can't earn it. You can't repent enough. <laughs> you can't give enough uh, alms. You can't pay enough money. You can't go to a priest and." And have them, you know, wave his hand on you. Everything you've done is gone. It doesn't work that way. It's because of the grace, 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 God's redemption at Christ's expense. It's because the grace of God has allowed you to make it through. He say, for the gifts of the calling of God are without repentance. For as in times past, those that have not believed in God, that was people who didn't believe in God, a lot of folk didn't believe in God, a lot of folk didn't trust in God, but God, in his infinite wisdom, that through your mercy, they also may obtain mercy. And see, that's the way we are in people. We have to, we have, we have to be the Bible for some people. They may not ever go into church, but you have to be, as a Christian, you are God's ambassador to go out and spread the good news of the Bible. You know, some people are going, you need to tell, I know a man. I know someone that is able to take you through there. 
You know, he say, you still may suffer through a little, but I, I, I tell you in the end, it's going to be all worth your while. You know, because God does not want us to leave earth without accepting him. What's that old uh, insurance dealer? Don't leave home without it. <laughs> Don't leave earth without God. <laughs> you better not. You better have him in your fold when you leave here. Because if you leave here uh, without God, Lord knows if you think it's hot now. <laughs> Keep on living with you. Then what you're talking about then, there is eternal damnation. There's no chance of you running into the air conditioning. No chance you going in a cooling off room. No, that's everyday torture. Uh, so you better live right. It says, for God had concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. See, he includes us. He includes those that don't believe. You know, it, people will tell you they don't believe. I don't believe in no God. How can you believe in a God? But as soon as something happened to him, what they say? Lord, have mercy. And see, that's the way God is. God has mercy on them. Even if they don't believe, that's the God that I serve. He loves us in spite of ourselves. And see, we got to trust in God in all that we do. You got to know that he didn't bring you this far to leave you. You might go through some little things. It may get hard sometimes. It may get rough. But if you think it's rough, then let me see you lay down and let them nail you to a cross. Let me see you lay down and let them to the side. If you think it's rough, then you see what Jesus went through. Then tell me that it's rough. And he did it for me. He did it for me. And that's why I said, Lord, we serve an awesome, awesome God. Yes, sir. I said, young man heard me. Y'all won't hear me. He said, amen. I heard him back there. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, hey, you need to understand that God is watching us. And he expects us to be a formidable representation for him. So that those that are on the outside can find their way home. You know, sometimes a word to someone can change their life. You know, just a, a, a smile can change somebody's day. Uh, but just to know, and you see a person that's going through, I, I was going through a uh, a store the other day, and I don't know this young lady behind the counter was vexed. And boy, she was upset. I don't know whether it was a husband or a son, but she was upset. And, and I say, young lady, I said, God love. for the way people treat us. He looked at us at how we react to what people treat us. And so just because somebody do you wrong, you know, pray on, let me tell you something. The worst thing you can do is pray for somebody that's, that's doing you wrong. And they either say, man, and they start to get scared then. They say, I was in, a, in in an office situation, and I said, "Man, I'm not going to deal with all this. I'm just going. I'm just going. Yeah, I, I remember one of my pastors. He would always say, 'I'm just going to tell God, oh, oh T. A. Johnson, <laughs> he's gone now.' He said, 'I'm just going to tell God on it.' And and Lord knows. And when you start to pray, they say, either that boy crazy, he really believe in God, and so you can change somebody's whole life by trusting and believing in God." And teaching them that, hey, whatever I go through, it may look bad now. I say, but God is going to find a way out. Because he's what? He's a way 
maker. <laughs> and all we got to do is trust him. And then we'll be able to find out the faithfulness of our God. I don't know about your God, but my God is faithful. He sure is. He's awesome. He's awesome. Yes, sir. He's done so much for me. And we say it all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And let the church say, Amen. Amen.